Hi everyone, uh, my name is Dr. Jeff Cadichon. I'm from Haiti. I earned my PhD in uh, clinical psychology and psychopathology at University of Bourgogne, Franche Comté in France. That's the reason why the name of the university is in French too. I'm a double winner of uh, the Civil Society Scholar Award, a highly competitive open society foundation award for my doctoral research focusing on traumatism, resilience and identity among adolescents and young adult survivors of the AET 2010 earthquake. Uh, let me mention that I'm the, I'm the author of the book Narration du Sensible, the title is in French, the subtitle is Post-Traumatic Narratives of Survivors of the January 12, 2010 earthquake in Haiti. Uh, the book has been published by uh, the editions of uh, the State University of Haiti. So I'm currently teaching uh, psychology at State University of Haiti and uh, Notre Dame University of Haiti. As a clinical uh, psychologist, uh, I collaborate with uh, several organizations, institutions in Haiti in psychological evaluation, care delivery, and also therapeutic management. I'm uh, the Asian based clinical director at Nadej. Nadej is a non profit providing mental health and psychosocial support to women victims of sexual violence in Haiti. I'm so proud to be part of this mission. First of all, I would like to say thank you to uh, the Professional Development uh, Subcommittee of the Pan American Regional Office of uh, the International Pharmaceutical uh, Student Federation for uh, this important invitation uh, to be a guest uh, speaker at this uh, webinar about management of emotions in the healthcare professional patient relationship in uh, a hospital setting. So I think this is a really huge initiative. Uh, I congratulate all the team for this. So thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity to share my, my modest experience uh, to the audience. I hope that will uh, be very helpful uh, to everyone attending this uh, webinar, especially uh, the pharmacy students for a better management of uh, their emotions and those of the patients. So as a clinical uh, psychologist, uh, I have several experiences in uh, working in hospital setting. And I would like uh, to point out uh, just three of them that will give me uh, the opportunity to be focused uh, on some key points in professional patient relationship. Uh, I remember in uh, 20, uh, 2014, I was uh, a clinical psychology intern at uh, a clinic uh, in France. It was a cardiovascular and uh, pulmonary uh, rehabilitation center. It was a very, very rewarding experience. And also, uh, I worked as a clinical uh, psychologist uh, from 2018 to 2019 at a private uh, center for psychological and psychiatric care in Haiti. Another very uh, great experience. And more recently, uh, during the COVID-19 outbreak, I was an external clinical psychologist at a private hospital in Port-au-Prince to provide uh, psychological support to COVID-19 patients and their families. So these experiences were uh, crucial for my professional career. In, uh, I would say in uh, 2014, uh, as an intern, at uh, the cardiovascular and pulmonary uh, rehabilitation center that I mentioned uh, before, I had to conduct individual interviews and also uh, psychotherapeutic follow-ups. I had to participate actively in um, team meetings and share my clinical notes uh, to the rest of the of the healthcare team, and uh, I had professional patient relationship with people who have undergone heavy surgery with, uh, for example, cardiac 
in our respiratory pathologies. So these people uh, saw their lives change overnight and uh, they struggled to give sense to their new uh, living conditions. So difficult living conditions. Uh, some of them face a lack of social support. The situation was somehow similar for, for the COVID-19 patients and their families. The COVID-19 patients were experiencing anxiety and uh, depression symptoms after testing positive. Their families were experiencing mental health consequences too. So when I was collaborating uh, with the private uh, Center for Psychological and Psychiatric Care in Haiti, I had to work with the patients with psychiatric disorders and also their families. So in these three experiences, my relationship with these patients helped me to have a deep understanding of the importance of the ability of the healthcare professional, including mental health care to recognize and understand emotions in themselves as professional and the patients too and also the ability to use this awareness to manage their behavior in uh, their professional patient relationship as a professional during a professional patient relationship i think you need to accurately perceive your own emotions and understand your tendencies across situations that will have a positive impact on your relationship with your patients and that will facilitate you to provide good quality care to stay flexible and i would say to direct your behavior positively toward your patients and I think at the same time, so you must do your best to perceive what your patients are thinking and feeling, even if you are not feeling like the same way. So you must show empathy. My experience helped me uh, to understand that a very good management of emotions in the healthcare professional patient relationship in a hospital setting can contribute positively to the healing process of a patient. As Carl Rogers uh, said, uh, just a quick uh, reminder, uh, Carl Rogers is an American psychologist and one of uh, the founders of uh, the humanistic approach and client-centered approach. Uh, so in psychology uh, for sure and he said that a therapist in this case i would say a, a healthcare provider so should have three fundamental attitudes authenticity or congruence uh, like the therapist is congruent or um gaining in the relationship empathy so the therapist uh, experience uh, and communicates an empathic understanding of uh, the client's internal perspective. And also uh, the third attitude is unconditional positive acceptance. So in this case, the therapist has a unconditional positive regard toward the client. So if I will use uh, the Carl Rogers uh, three attitudes on the professional patient relationship. I would say it's like, uh, I would say like for accurate, uh, accurate empathy, I would say the professional needs to engage in active listening, uh, paying careful attention to the patient's feelings and thoughts. That is really important. So the professional conveys an accurate understanding of the patient's private world, so throughout their relationship, as if it were their own. That is really important too. So 
One helpful uh, technique to express accurate empathy is reflection. So, which involves, uh, I would say, paraphrasing and uh, or summarizing uh, the feelings behind what the patient says. So, rather than uh, the content. So, you, you need to look at um, the, the, the feelings and share that your understanding with the patient. So this is also allows patients to process their feelings after hearing, like after they hearing them, re, I would say, uh, from someone else. So that is really important. And about congruence. So let's say very quickly that the professional uh, transparently conveys in the situation their feelings and thoughts to genuinely relate uh, to the patient. So reading the professional patient relationship, the professional is genuinely himself. That is really important too. So the professional does not hide behind the professional uh, facade or like deceive the client, the client. So that is that is that is a key point because the professional is a human being too. So professionals may share their emotional reactions with their patients, but should not share their personal problem with patients or shift the focus to themselves in any way. So that is really important. I hope you understand this attitude too. So let's move to the next attitude. So about the unconditional positive regards. So the professional creates a wrong environment uh, that conveys to patients that they are accepted unconditionally. The professional does not signal like uh, judgment approval or disapproval, no matter how unconventional the client's views may be. So this may allow the patient uh, to drop uh, their natural defenses allowing them to uh, freely express uh, their feelings and direct their self-exploration as they see like as uh, they see uh, they see fit i would say so managing uh, em emotions during healthcare professional patient relationship in a hospital setting for example that involves uh, setting up good communication with your patient for a better quality of care. So lack of communication uh, is one of the major causes of adverse event associated with care. So for me, uh, involving uh, the patient and in including healthcare professional in uh, the process uh, has a direct impact on the quality of care and the safety of patients and therefore the recovery. So in addition, I think that will contribute to, to the to the to the attenuation, uh, the attenuation of, of the feeling and also uh, not only the feeling itself, but the feeling of loneliness. Uh, because most of the time we see that uh, among the patients. So indeed, uh, the presence of the healthcare professional and uh, the bond it creates with uh, the patient, that can break uh, this isolation we can see uh, among the patients. For me, uh, in the healthcare uh, professional patient relationship in a hospital setting, uh, to adopt a good attitude towards our uh, emotions as professional and those of our patient, we need to consider that uh, during this professional patient relationship, the professional is providing uh, what I can call a psychological first aid. So what does that mean? So let me explain. When we look at what psychological first aid consists of, so we see that certain principles uh, could be applied to the professional patient relationship for, for a better management of emotions and better quality of care. So psychological first aid represents both human and supportive 
uh, help given to a person who is suffering uh, and who may need support. So it is provide concrete, non-intrusive support and care, access uh, the person's needs and concerns, and also uh, help people uh, meet uh, their basic needs. Uh, even in this context, I don't think we are going to do all of this. Uh, but another, another, another key point is uh, to listen uh, to the person without pushing them to speak. That is really important. So uh, other thing, comfort people and help them calm down and uh, help people uh, get the information, services, and social support they need uh, if this is uh, possible. So we need to do it too. And we can protect people from possible new dangers. So, uh, yes, so understand and manage emotions in the healthcare professional patient relationship will contribute to provide uh, social, physical, and emotional support to the patient. So in any case, be humble. Uh, present yourself as someone who is there to, to listen and help and not as someone who will solve all the problems. That is really important. So you cannot solve all the problems of the patients. So the professional must uh, strive to uh, respect safety, uh, uh, dignity, and rights of the patients, uh, adapt what we need to adapt what we are doing or what we what we do uh, to take into account the culture of the person. That is really important. So take care of yourself as a professional too, because you are a human being. And uh, uh, treat people with respect, taking into account the cultural and social norms, like I said, and help people assert um, their rights and benefits uh, from the support available if it is possible. And we need to respect the patient's privacy and ensure uh, the confidentiality of their history uh, if necessary. Uh, my clinical experiences have also allowed me to understand that uh, good management of emotions in the professional patient relationship allows the professional to help patients assert their rights and benefits from the support available, like I just said, and the professional must remember that he must often work with people who are going through um, or have just had a difficult experience and who may be, uh, I would say, disoriented, anxious, stressed, sad or feel guilty. So listen to the person with respect without judging them. And some people will not want to speak right away. So you need to understand that. You must respect the silence and the expression of their emotions is a non-verbal way. So be there for the patients. Uh, first, that is the most important. So I would say, be there for patients first while doing the specific task of, of your job. <laughs> so remember that sometimes uh, a show of attention will be more important than anything else. So to do this, be aware of your gestures and attitudes. Do not forget to consider uh, traditions and cultural aspects related to the age culture and religious uh, belief of the patient. So as I said before, show empathy for the difficult experience the patient is going through, but also seek to understand his inner experience uh, if it is possible. So that is really important too. So this will allow you to uh, properly understand and manage emotions in your professional patient relationship. I want to say it again, don't be like directive. On the, on the contrary, listen. 
it's really important listen listen and listen again <laughs> so when the patient is listened to and heard when uh you do this i think the patient may be more able to see their inner world with new eyes and move forward so it's amazing how feelings uh that were like uh, perfectly uh frightening because um I would say beable as soon as someone listens to us. So it's amazing how problems that seem impossible to solve become solvable uh, when someone hears us. <laughs> so it is also necessary to offer active listening uh, to the patient, for example, to allow him to be able to communicate uh, with his loved ones as quickly as possible to help uh, the patient maintain contact with uh, family and friends during us, uh, us hospitalization for example so we, we need to create a link between uh affected people uh I, I can say infected and affected people uh in the case of covid 19 for example uh and that will create mutual support that can be sustainable over time. So finally, uh, I would like to suggest that you read books and documents on emotional intelligence. <laughs> so I think that is really important. That was really helpful uh, uh, to, to me and I think it's really important to, um, to, to, to share this, this advice uh, because uh, initially someone um, did that for me and i think it could also uh, very uh, um, help you both in your personal life and in your professional patient patient relationship uh, for better management of emotions in in the healthcare professional patient relationship in a hospital setting for example so uh i think it, I, I have a book in my mind uh so there is there is this book that I, I find uh, very interesting. Uh, the name is, or the title is uh, Emotional Intelligence 2.0. Uh, it's a book written by uh, Travis Barbary and Jean uh, Greaves. So uh, I, I can share with you uh, what uh, the authors uh, describe as uh, the four skills of emotional intelligence. First thing, like the first skill, there is self-awareness, which is uh, the ability to perceive your own emotions accurately. So self-awareness is a foundational skill uh, that makes uh, the other emotional skills uh, much easier to use. After that, we have um, self-management, which is your ability to manage your emotional reactions to situation and people. The third skill is social awareness. It's your ability uh, to accurately pick up on emotions in other people and understand what is really going on with them. That is really important. So it's uh, being in practice, by the way. <laughs> so social awareness will ensure you to stay uh, focused and absorb critical information. So. The last skill is relationship management. It's your ability to use your awareness of your own emotions and those of others like your patients to manage interactions successfully. So I think this is what I wanted to share with you today. So uh, I hope that uh, talking about my experiences and uh, providing uh, humbly professional uh, advice uh, to help you uh, 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 to have a good attitude toward your emotions and uh, uh, those of uh, your patients was so helpful. So I, I, I hope it was helpful. And once again, uh, thank you to the Professional uh, Development uh, Subcommittee of the Pan American Regional Office uh, of uh, the International Pharmaceutical uh, Students Federation uh, for the invitation. Congratulations 
for the good work you are doing. So I really appreciate it. So stay safe, everyone, and bye. Hopefully, see you soon.